Hello, I'm K.D. Hale, Vice President of the Association of African American Cultural Gardens, and I have the honor of welcoming you, our audience, to our Sankofa Web Series. Our goal is to educate regarding the African American experience through this series. We will be interviewing some of the most interesting, engaging leaders, business leaders, and great entrepreneurs in this great city. These change agents will tell us about their journey, who they are, who inspired them, what they do, and what does African American history and African American cultural gardens mean to them. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page, the Association of African American Cultural Gardens. And go to our website, aaacg.org, for most updated information regarding events in our Sankofa series, which can also be viewed on demand. We will be breaking ground for the final phase of building the African American Garden this year, and we are excited. But in the meantime, please enjoy this episode of the Sankofa series brought to you by the Association of African American Cultural Gardens. Thank you. Hi, I am Val B. King, granddaughter of legendary King of the Blues, B.B. King. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring, ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till Well, welcome to another episode of the Sankofa series where we educate you all the public on the importance of not only the African-American uh, experience, but also the importance of the African-American cultural gardens. We also uplift many of the achievements of many of our leaders here in the community. Delon Dillard here, uh, news anchor uh, for News 5 Cleveland, joined here by my good fraternity brother, Kevin Clayton. You serve as the president of uh, diversity and inclusion for the Cleveland Cavaliers, so welcome. Delon, good, good to see you. you. Good to see you as well. So we will jump right into this. So uh, tell me a bit more about yourself and many uh, members of the public who may not know the work that you do here in the community. And so from a personal standpoint, I actually grew up here in Cleveland. So growing up in Cleveland, uh, graduated from Shaker, had an opportunity to play basketball here and uh, went on to college and played in North Carolina Central. And a lot of the work that you do, because we've talked about this, is really behind the scenes, but it ultimately really translate to, it translates to things that you end up seeing in front of the camera and in front of the scene. Talk, talk to me about it. People don't understand how much work does go on behind the scenes that impacts exactly what is on the court, what people see from a fan experience standpoint, and the image of our, of our brand. So we get an opportunity on the basketball operations side with Kobe Altman and, and Coach J.B. Bickerstaff to really work with them from a culture standpoint. And, and helping them through our, our team to influence kind of the organization culture. Also, we get a chance to work with, if you think about the fan experience and all the different theme nights that we have, we're really driving a lot of that behind the scenes to make sure that each fan experience that we have on any given activation night, let it be our Black Heritage Celebration, let it be Noche Latina, let it be Pride Night, or what have you, we're right there working with the entire organization to make sure that our building has the look and feel of the communities in which we're reaching out to. All of which is nothing in which anyone's gonna see, they're just gonna know what the experience is like, and we wanna make sure it's an equitable experience for everybody who comes in our building. And I understand that also includes recruiting, retaining, and promoting uh, us, black people. Right, right, and what I love about the NBA and what I love about the Cavs is that we're not shy about saying that 85% of our players are African-American, 
Therefore, we want to make sure that we are doing everything we possibly can to connect with the African American community, yeah. not exclusive of anyone else, but making sure that we are, are, are catering to the community from the plate within which the players have come from, as well as if you look at the coaches, general managers, the NBA has a large, larger percentage of African Americans in those positions than any other sports, and it's not by accident. That is a plan, that is a structured strategy, because we understand that giving back to the community that gives to us is really important. And you talked about giving back. Um, Talk to me about mentorship. I know you had mentors, you have mentors, and I'm sure you have mentees. So reaching back and giving back or sending that elevator back down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in my career, actually early on, I mentioned I started my career with p &G. There weren't many African-American men or women that were at a significant level within the organization for me to be able to look up to. I actually had several white males that were my mentors within PNG, and the reason why that's important is from a mentee mentor standpoint, it's about connecting to a person and their values and their, their alignment, and I had just had people that saw things in me and wanted to help me. So I've taken that mentality throughout my career and even what we do with the CAV standpoint, there's probably no less than six or seven young African American men and women and probably another four or five white men and women that I mentor to just try to help them with their careers, as well as what we've done is to extend our brand outside of the walls of Rocky Morgan's Fieldhouse, where we partner with the Urban League and their My Brother's Keeper program, and we're one of the kind of co-leads on that. And there's over 150 young men that we, that we partner with and that we provide mentoring opportunities to. Also, Saving Our Daughters, which is Kiki Palmer's foundation, which is also here in Cleveland, their, their branch here in Cleveland. We partner with them, and there's probably another 50 African-American, black and brown girls that we partner with from a mentoring standpoint. So it's very important to me, it's very important to our organization, it's very important to our community that those of us who have had the opportunity and been blessed with making it to a certain level in the, organ in, in the community, in our careers, that we absolutely reach back. Yeah, and, and I know also part of that reaching back, especially with the Cavs organization, you uh, uh, recruit people from HBCUs and have kind of a pipeline uh, to bring people, whether that be to the Cavs or to another organization. Uh, talk to me about that. Yeah, so what we've done, um, and it's really from the league, they actually created a, um, an HBCU alliance where they are feeding all teams opportunity to have HBCU students as either interns or for full-time hires and what have you. So what we have done is bought, bought into that, and with Central State being here in Ohio, there's actually five um, HBCU alums and five HBCU students. So it was about 10 students and, 10, and five alums that we had partnered with to try to drive representation from those schools to potential uh, employees of ours. And if nothing else than them coming in for internships, we have an opportunity to expose them to sports and if, if somebody from, that works with us with the Cavs goes to the Milwaukee Bucks or goes to the Browns or the Guardians, we're all for that. The other thing in which we've done is that uh, we partner with CMSD here where all three of the sports teams are doing a sports combine in, in relationship to HBCU. So we're giving them exposure, giving kids that are in high school here exposure to sports and then in partnership with HBCUs, they'll go on to have that experience and then come back with internships for us or with us. So pivot into to this um, African American history, black history. We know it's important because it's our history. But for people who may be watching that may not be black, why is black history important? Why should they care about it? You know, it's interesting you just, you asked me that because our black history shirt this year said black history is American history, of which the players wore it. Um, it's something in which we sell the, in, in our in our pro shop where monies and proceeds goes back to nonprofit organizations. I firmly believe that there's no American history without black history. I mean, it, it, it may, how, how could that happen? So the exclusion of black history says that our country is willing to exclude a big part of the history that has made our country what it is. So absence of having the conversation of black history outside of the black community is instrumental in making sure that we are inclusive and that we are actually breaking down those barriers that exist today because of the, of the ignorance that a lot of people have around the importance of black history to this entire country. When we talk about history, the African American Cultural Gardens, it really documents a lot of our history, black history. Um, how important is that? Well, 
for me, it's very important. And ever since I came back here in 2019, I've had an opportunity to partner with the African American Cultural Gardens in whatever little ways we could, participating in the June, Juneteenth celebration and understanding that the, the actual exhibit itself talks about the past, the present, and the future. So when you think about the African American Cultural Gardens, it really does have us reflect back. It gives us an opportunity to think about and really meditate on the current situation, the current environment, but more so it gives us hope for the future. And that's what I'm about. That's what I know our organization is about. So the Cultural Gardens is a big part of African American history here in Cleveland. And I just want to encourage more people to have that experience because it really does give you a moment of reflection and also kind of forward thinking around where our country's going as it relates to our community and our culture. Yeah. Um, last question here, for the next generation, we talked about mentorship, you mentor so many people. Um, advice for the next generation to reach their goals and, and eventually be who they want to be. So I'm also a father of four daughters, all of which are different stages in their careers. And I'll answer that question from the lens of how I mentor my four daughters. And there's two things that are important. One of which is thinking about whatever field of endeavor you go into, that it's that industry that is your employer. It isn't the actual employer you start with. And I say that because a couple of my daughters are concerned around, well, I've only been at this particular company for one or two years, and you know, but I have this other opportunity. I'm encouraging them to explore those opportunities because if you stay really focused on one company at one, or one organization and don't explore others, then you really don't have an opportunity to expand your learning, your, your horizons. So think about the industry, not necessarily the employer. And then secondly, that I believe from kind of the messaging to, to young men and women today is that you can absolutely be anything that you want to be. And as, as cliche as that is, I just know myself in my career, thinking about what I wanted to do. I wanted to be in professional sports. I thought it would be on the other side with me being on the court. Never knew I'd have this opportunity to actually have such an impact probably more of an impact behind the scenes than if I had made it to the NBA and was an actual player. So I never thought I could do that, but I kept my dreams and hope, hope alive. So we can do anything that we want to do, and we are wired uniquely as a people to persevere and to make it through to the end of what our dream is. All right. My good brother, Kevin Clayton, thanks so much for, for joining us. Well, we appreciate you joining us for another episode of the Sankofa series. You can watch every single episode on YouTube. We'll see you uh, for the next episode. Hello, I'm Beverly Lloyd, board member and Juneteenth chair for the Association of African American Cultural Garden. And we are bringing you Do You Know? We like to highlight leaders in the community, both in person and virtually. So let's take off right now with a wonderful individual and see if you do know. This individual hails from the city of Cleveland, Ohio served as mayor of Warrensville Heights, Ohio, a position she held for two terms. As mayor of Warrensville Heights, Ohio, she adopted one of the first vacant and abandoned property ordinances in the state. An American attorney and member of the Democratic Party, she served as the U.S. Representative for Ohio's 11th Congressional District from 2008 to 2021 when she began serving as the 18th United States Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. She has worked at nonprofits, local initiatives, and a Neighborhood Progress Incorporated. If you guessed United States Secretary Marsha Fudge, then you do know. Hi, my name is Evelyn Lorenz, a member of the Association of African American Cultural Garden. The African American experience is a journey. Our garden is representing the journey of African Americans from Africa to this great country, or you can imagine the journey from the South to the North or the Underground Railroad, which will be represented by the North Star on the platform at the African American Garden. We are also on a journey to complete the garden. We have raised over $1 million, but need your help to get to completion. 
Wouldn't it be great for your grandchildren and great-grands to know that you were a part of this great effort? Our goal is to complete the gardens in 2022. Please be a part of history and go to aaacg.org or mail your tax deductible gift to P.O. Box 20237, Cleveland, Ohio. Thank you.